Well, hello everyone. FBOs are the front line for the business aviation industry. The companies supporting operators with ground handling and maintenance have seen firsthand how the disruption from the COVID-19 pandemic has decimated traffic levels around the world. But now they're at the forefront of efforts to get the sector back in the air again. And joining me today is AIN Senior Editor Kurt Epstein, for whom FBOs are something of a second home. Kurt, what are you hearing uh, in terms of whether activity is now picking up uh, as lockdown rules are lifted, at, at least in the US? Well, Charlie, in North America, at least, uh, there have been definite signs of a, uh, a, a comeback. How, how strong or how tepid that is remains to be seen. But this uh, past week covered the uh, Memorial Day holiday here in the United States, and traffic was up to under 3% of the levels seen last year. So that's a pretty good showing. But those numbers are in comparison. Uh, overall, U.S. Uh, North American-based flight activities are still down about 50%. But when you compare that to uh, the month before, where it was down 75%, it shows there's definitely an upwards trend. In Europe, they had a span of uh, four days where there were flights, and this is all flights, including commercial, of more than 6,000 a day, which was the first time that's happened in about two months. But when you consider that's still 82% below the normal operating uh, levels of flights, it still shows there's a long way to go for improvement. Yeah, that's interesting. So some signs of encouragement, but nothing to get too excited about. And uh, of course, for any of that to happen, Kurt, I suppose it's true to say that FBOs are having to take a whole complex set of measures to ensure that operations can resume safely, uh, reducing the risk of infection among passengers, crews and support staffs. Just try and describe for us some of the steps that they're having to take to make that happen safely. Well, that's true, Charlie. As soon as this pandemic really began to take hold around the world, I began receiving emails from companies touting the measures that they're taking to ensure the safety of their employees and their customers in terms of uh, what, what they're doing to combat the coronavirus. And it's ranged from ensuring that all employees use the uh, personal pr uh, protection equipment to upgraded and uh, enhanced sanitation measures, cleaning schedules, uh, all high touch areas right down to the button that you press to get into the parking lot uh, being cleaned on a regular scale a regular basis all of these measures and uh, signature the world's largest flight uh, support provider they took measures to say they're not using any uh, any dishware or any other um, cleanable items everything's been gone to disposable uh, some FBOs pride themselves on their snack bars, these spreads of goodies that they put out there for their crews and their passengers to partake in. Those have been largely done away with. Uh, any snacks have now been uh, relegated to prepackaged. So they no more have, sort of homemade style cookies and just help yourself to coffee. It's a bit more regimented. No, no. Coffee bars have either been gotten away with or they will basically have a person who is in charge of giving you coffee. You tell them what they want. They go over there and they'll handle the equipment and bring you a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. So those things are gone. Some FBOs have taken to segregating passenger groups. Uh, if they're all going to be on the same airplane, they'll keep them separate in a certain area until their aircraft is ready so that there's no mingling in the terminal and reducing that by play among different people in the lobbies. And what I've heard from even some light operators is that they're eschewing the FBO experience altogether. They're asking their passengers to go and, where possible, drive directly out onto the ramp and to eliminate that particular set of touch points. Yeah, that's interesting. So quite a different experience. But the truth is for FBOs, whether or not the passengers actually come through the FBO building, you know, they're still having to make a significant investment of time and money to, to get everything right, to make sure that they're in a position to clean everything correctly. And that means spending more money at a time when traffic is still down. That can't be a very attractive business proposition in a way. No, no. I mean, some FBOs have gone as far as when this all happened last month. I uh, wrote an article on European FBOs and how some of the major players are dealing with this. And some FBOs are basically have a, a video conference with a uh, with a medical professional to ensure that their customers coming into the facilities are are, are are um, not ill. So it depends on how far they really want to go. But handing out personal protection equipment and all these things is uh, definitely 
um, definitely costly at a time, as you mentioned, where revenues may be, may be tightened. Some FBOs have basically looked to this as a source of uh, ancillary business. They're offering now aircraft disinfection where you'll bring your airplane there and they'll say in two hours we can have it disinfected. We have trained crews, we have the equipment, we have the materials, and we can disinfect your aircraft within two hours. Yeah. And do we know whether these these disinfectant measures inside aircraft are truly effective? I mean, there are people advertising all sorts of different things you can spray. I've seen companies offering UV light treatments. I mean, are, are we sure that these things really do the job? We're not sure. There are companies probably out there who are looking to pedal materials that may not be appropriate in this case. Uh, you should check with the FAA and the CDC. MBAA posts a list of things, uh, the guidelines you should go through for disinfecting aircraft. But you should make sure that whatever you use is aircraft approved. There are some materials out there that could actually cause damage to uh, avionics and things like that. If you have a very high-end cabin, as is the case in most luxury business jets. You want to make sure whatever you're using doesn't harm it and damage that that finish to reduce the value of the, uh, the cabin interior. But whatever you do, you should make sure that it is approved, it's tested, and that it's warranted. also even by the manufacturer. Uh, manufacturers are posting guides on what should be used and what shouldn't be used. So before you take anyone's word out of it, do your research, make sure what they're going to do or what they're proposing to do is A, effective, and B, not harmful to the aircraft. Yeah, very good point indeed. Well, credit to the FBOs for going to these extraordinary measures. Um, but some might look at this sector now with, with all these, these challenges and complications and say, wow, you know, that's a business I don't want to invest in. But from what your stories tell us, there are people still spending money in the FBO sector investing in new facilities. Tell us what you've seen. Well, the timeline, Charlie, for building an FBO, you don't just snap your fingers, it appears. And there's a, a lag of probably about a year between groundbreaking and when the facility is completed. And a year ago, when some of these companies were deciding to pull the trigger on a new FBO, multi-million dollar FBO, they could not have foreseen, nor can anyone have foreseen what the world would look like a year later. And these facilities have had a somewhat inauspicious debut opening in the midst of this uh, this pandemic. Uh, at Houston Hobby, there was uh, Galaxy FBO, which had operated a single FBO at Conroe North Houston Executive Airport, and they expanded. It was a long anticipated expansion, and they have a new FBO at Houston Hobby, bringing it now to six full service FBOs, a very competitive field, a very hotbed of business aviation traffic. But Galaxy FBO's sister company, Wing Aviation, was a large charter provider, and they were based at Hobby, and they got tired of having to use other people's hangars and other people's fuel supplies. So they petitioned to get uh, permission to open up their own FBO, which eventually they did, and they opened their new facility. And Wing Aviation is now based there, and it's now, uh, now a going concern. Mm -hmm. Another FBO, Flight, which they had uh, announced the uh, groundbreaking a long time ago for their facility in – uh, Gerald Ford International Airport in Grand Rapids, Michigan is another one. They just opened. And, you know, you have to wish these facilities luck that they're opening into a uh, into the situation. But one might think, hey, here they're opening up and they're brand new facilities. They haven't been contaminated yet. So who knows how they'll fare. That's true. That's a, that's a good way to look at it. And some, I think, are investing but not necessarily making a big splash about it. I think you told me that, uh, you know, there, there's some people expanding but maybe waiting to announce it. Yeah, I know of at least one FBO that opened during this period, and they don't want it announced. They're holding off until some time in the future. I don't know if they want to be associated with a new facility in the midst of all of this uh, this confusion and uh, and chaos. Yeah, well, who can blame them? Well, Kurt, that's excellent. And as I said at the top, uh, FBOs really are in the front line, and we're glad that you're there with them in the front line. Please keep those ears of yours to the ground. We'll get back to you. Uh, in a few weeks and try and find out what else has transpired. Great spending time with you, Kurt. Anytime, Charlie. Thank you. Thanks for watching this AIN video. Please like, subscribe, and share it if you've enjoyed it. Also, visit AINonline.com for all the latest on the aviation industry.